part about the history of Everybody Loves Raymond was given how it all started, you were almost lucky to make it through the first season. So I want to reflect on that a little bit. It was a show with a very odd title and like, who's this Raymond? I mean, nobody knew who Raymond was before all this began. You were on Friday nights on CBS, which was pretty much a death slot. So what, so, so, so what, what, what was the turning point? How did it all turn around? Uh, it turned around when Les Moonves gave us a chance for the last six weeks of season one to go on after Cosby on Monday night. One aspect of the legacy of Everybody Loves Raymond that a lot of people tend to forget about is uh, the David Letterman connection. And he's made so much news in the last week that Worldwide Pants being a production entity for the show. And it was even instrumental in getting on the air, perhaps, by having a B. Letterman show. I mean, would you explain your relationship with Dave and how this show well, came to be in that respect? I, had, I was doing stand-up for a living. For, uh, I was in my 11th year of doing stand-up comedy. And I got the David, my first David Letterman spot. I basically had done all the TV shows, and no one was offering me. Uh, you know, that's when the comics were getting the sitcoms. And it was after my first Letterman spot that they, they called my house on a, on, this is true, on a Saturday afternoon, they called my house and said, we're interested in developing something. You know, just no, don't, don't sign with anybody. And I told them right there on the phone, I go, there's nobody else. No. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Good, Good business. Ed. Yeah, so we developed, they signed me to a one year development deal. Um, and then they sent me to LA, I was living in New York, and I met 12 possible people to write the show. And I lucked out and met this gentleman right here. Oh. Yeah. And he created a show where, where I could live in, and, and, and here we are. But Letterman was very influential because, yes, they were going to look at what he had to offer first, probably, and give it a shot. But they were going to cancel it if it wasn't uh, doing, doing what it had to do. And so uh, we got lucky. If you worked on the show, your job was to go home, get in a fight with your wife, and come back in and tell me about it. <laughs> yes. And that was the show. If it, uh, you know, borrowed from the great Carl Reiner, the way he operated the Dick Van Dyke show was, what happened at your house this week? And the, we saw in this premise the same modus operandi, that we could also mine our own lives. And of course, all the best stuff comes from that. The, you saw the clip of the angry family. Mm. This happened in our kids' uh, school. We came in and he started the angry family. The literally, that, and at first I was horrified as everyone looked at us. And then in the next second I thought, how lucky am I to have a child who writes for my television show? <laughs> <laughs> One Peter Boyle story, uh, you know, sweetest man ever, by the way, the opposite of the character on, on TV. And I was a, new, a newbie as far as acting. And on the first week of rehearsal, here's the great Peter Boyle, you know, the movie star, and this big presence. And I hadn't really said much to him. And we're rehearsing, and I'm like, am I doing it right? I don't know, in my own head. And then Peter just stopped me. I've told this story before, but uh, uh, he, he stopped me in between scenes, and he grabbed me by the arm, and he goes, it's just like water. Just let it flow. And I didn't know what it meant. But I knew it was some actory thing. <laughs> but it was the gesture, just that gesture of taking me and caring about me. You know, he made me feel very, very comfortable. And you know, and I, 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 you I, peed yourself. I, I peed myself. <laughs> he let it flow. <laughs> <laughs> Network TV in particular has been so unfriendly in recent years in terms of like the multi-cam, this classic type of comedy that you do with the multi-camera comedy, while, you know, Big Bang Theory is the biggest hit show, but still the networks have really kind of turned their back on it, but you've just filmed a multi-cam comedy. True. And what's your, what's your, what's your um, opinion on the fact that the networks, and, and network TV in particular, being broad and broadcaster and broadcasting, that this is the kind of comedy that does reach the most people. Raymond did, Friends did, uh, you know, and now Big Bang Theory. Why is it seeming so, that the industry itself doesn't seem to respect it as much? Or do you think that it's ready for a comeback? I don't know. I think it, the problem with the world is that everybody is so short-term goal-oriented. Just grab ratings now and grab them from the young people. That's what seems to be hot right now. And so they ignore the, the big picture, the, the longer view. Even when we were creating the show, it, we had a long-term view. I, I remember saying, yes, it's for CBS, but in the back of my mind, it's, it's for TV land, the Nick at Night. And here we are. Mm -hmm. But you can't get there unless you think long-term. 
right? Right. So that that if I have advice for anybody, it's you know think think ahead. Mm -hmm.